welcome all of you today. I'm very happy to introduce a very special guest, uh, a person who is so strong in spirit and who has such a passion for our, our Lord's uh, church and reaching out. And his name is Tony Fleege. And Tony, very good to have you with us. Thank you, Pastor. And Tony was on our program a year ago, and he has been living and serving in France. And so his ministry is to go out and to recognize the harvest and to, to reach as many people as he can for Jesus. And so, Tony, it's just good here today. I, I, it's going to just be very exciting to hear. I Thank you. Remember we had you on last year, and then you were heading back to France. Yes. And so just very excited now to want to hear about, you know, your ministry there. And, Thank you. And so specifically, you know, some people they go on missions to build buildings. <laughs> Others go on, on missions to teach. Yes, yes. Others go for medical missions. How would you describe your mission? My mission would be um, more of a preaching, teaching, uh, declaration, evangel evangelistic m mission. Um, so when we go, our mission is to preach the gospel. And, and so the gospel must be preached for, for all, to all the nations. And uh, the, so that's the commission of the Great Commission that the Lord has given the church is to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. So when we're in there, we, as we are, uh, we're based in Paris, France. And uh, as we're there, we are uh, itinerant missionaries um, that connect with local churches. We teach in Bible schools. We equip the students to rise up and to carry the gospel forth and to do what God called them to do. And we also are edifying the churches and helping and strengthening the, the local church through the gift that God has given me. Um, that the churches need all the gifts, and one of the gifts that I walk in is more the evangelistic, evangelical, uh, evangelist ministry uh, and, pro and proclaiming and to train up people to do the work of an evangelist, you know. Well, that's one of the gifts of the Spirit is the evangelist. You know, when you think about, you know, the lists, you know, that... The fivefold ministry gifts, yes. Right, and like one of them is being a pastor. Like, I'm a pastor <laughs> exactly. of a church. I've yes. been a pastor of a church now. Yeah, well, I'm, the one that I'm serving, I've been there now for 12 and a half years. Okay. You know, but being an evangelist is different, meaning that you are yeah, preaching yes. and teaching, but you are not in the same yes. place yes. for 12 and a half years. No, no. Okay, so, like... How exactly. long will you be at a church on average? I would, I, it varies, Pastor. It varies. And a lot of times you're a guest speaker and you're there and you go on. But the ones that I see the most fruit is, is when I'm there for two to three weeks where you can train and equip and demonstrate uh, and, and to impart uh, the grace of God that's upon my life and to, and to show them how to equip them to do what God has called us to do. So it varies from a 40, one, one meeting on a weekend or for three weeks uh, in training. Mm -hmm. so. And so the whole idea of, you know, as far as the church and the Holy Spirit calling evangelists and, you know, and I, you know, just in our own country, the United States, I sometimes wonder if, the evangelist. I mean, we need the evangelist right. to come by. I, yeah, yeah, my yeah. father was a pastor. I remember as a kid, he always made it a point that probably at least every year there'd be <laughs> an evangelist that would come to our church and would speak for a week. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's something that I just don't you, hear you don't, too don't. often anymore. Is the evangelist yeah. right, right. that comes in, works with the church, works with the pastor. Yes, yes, yes. He will oftentimes be preaching messages of salvation messages of encouragement, but then also instructing exactly. people to say, well, you need to be sharing the good news of yes. the gospel in, in the context of your own community mm -hmm. and church. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The, the gift of the evangelist also has the ability to, um, to move in the gifts of the Spirit, like gifts of healing, working of miracles. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we see people get, we pray for the sick. We see people get healed. We see people get saved. Uh, it's one of God's ways of demonstrating His love for the world. Um, so as we travel, we, we uh, give what we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this past 
so for the most part, you're in France and mm -hmm. like Paris. Well, right away when I think about Paris, one thing since the last time you were here is you had that terrible Paris attack. Sure. Was, and were you in Paris during that time? That day I was in, in Paris in the, you know, traveling. We went through the underground metro and used the train. And when I got home that evening, when we turned, my wife and I turned the TV on, um, we noticed that the, all the news and fear tried to come. And that tried to come upon my family and I. And you know, that fear was, is a spirit and it was very real. And so, you know, the next day in the community, there was very few people out on the streets. It was very quiet, um, but their life goes on, but it was very sombering, very sobering uh, time there. Um, but I, you know, I went out, you know, God didn't give us a fear and we go out and share the, that in fact, that next day I was teaching in a church in, in another place and we had an outreach and we like, well, should we go out? Well, now is the time to go out. This is when we need to be out there. Everybody's shaking up, Everybody's so to shaking, speak. Yeah. yeah. And so they were open. Uh, people were more receptive to the gospel. And even weeks afterwards, there's ministries that came in from America uh, that would come and to the, to the location. People would still come there and, and mourn. And just their presence being there, just standing next to somebody and saying, no, you know, can I pray for you? Uh, so their hearts are open, mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a, you don't know who you're meeting when you're cr walking down the street. Yeah. Well, I know another missionary couple that's in France. Okay. And we've had them on, them on the program here. And the way that they describe France is to say, well, they are a country that has a very rich Christian history, which you know, I've been able to study a lot of, I mean, mm -hmm. when you think of John Calvin and, yes. and people like that. But to say, but today, the overwhelming majority of the people are, are atheists. Or they would say, <clears throat> I, I, I confront them, I said, they wouldn't, I'll ask them if they believe there's a God, the youth. I would, they wouldn't say there isn't and they wouldn't say there is. And so it's very interesting. They like to be neutral. They don't More want to More like be, an agno yeah, agnostic. Yes. And so when I started talking to them, I said, would you believe if, there, if you knew there was a God, if you knew there was a God, would you believe in him? Well, without a question of a doubt, they said, yeah, I believe. And so I said, I said well, let me, I want to pray for you that you would know that there's a God and he's going to show himself real to you. And they were like very surprised. Because, you know, that is the first step and in, in, in coming to God. You must believe that he is. You can't come to God if you don't believe there is a God. Mm -hmm. And so I, therefore, before you even get to Jesus, you've got to believe there's a God. And so I said, God, he is real and he's going to show himself real to you. And I prayed and you should see their eyes open up and we prayed and I said, okay. So when you know, you're going to know, you, God will talk to you that there is a God. And then you, that's, he's going to show himself real to you. And so... There really is no true, you know, atheist. We know that. You know, inside there's mm -hmm. truth that sounded out. Because that's the way God has created us. Exactly. We have that sense of eternity exactly. and that there is something outside of ourselves yeah. or, or mm -hmm. beyond us more powerful. Yeah, yeah. They're deceiving mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. you know, deceiving themselves, saying there isn't, and that c causes your to quench and harden your heart to different things and to live a life that you want to live because your conscience is trying to rise up, but you're telling yourself there is no God, there is no hell, there is no devil, and so I'm just going to live life and that's the end. And so if they keep telling themselves that, they're deceiving themselves and they're believing a lie. And it's sad. And part of the original, or the original sin is to be our own God. So yeah, exactly, yeah. We want, exactly, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to read a little bit of a passage here. It just uh, a verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And verse uh, 6, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, uh, but God made it grow. Yes. And so, you know, you look at the work of the Holy Spirit, and somehow we want to be the full service, so to speak, to say, well, I'm going to bring this person from, from having a conversion to nurturing to... Yeah bearing fruit and ultimately to be a fruit of the kingdom in the harvest of eternal life. You know, but it sounds like here that God 
is the one who really is the full service, but he has calls different people into the harvest mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and into the church to do different things. Yes. And so right now, the calling that God has given to you is to be an itinerant uh, preacher or an evangelist that goes from community to community, church to church, yes. and to be able to preach yes. a message of salvation yes. that hopefully that as we think about this, that maybe we would say that, that you'd be the one who planted. Mm -hmm. or, wa or watered, yeah. But God in some cases that you're watering. Yes. Okay. And it's God given the increase. And it's our part to go. It's our part to preach. And it's God's part to save. So we do our part. He does his part. I say that um, this morning, my head and my body are their one. They work together. My head says, get out of bed. My body says, no. I won't be here today if my body didn't get out of bed. My head would still be there. And so the body cannot go, the head cannot go without the body. Well, we know who's the head of the church. Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church and we are the body. And so the Bible says, tells us, God tells us to go. The head says, get up and go. And the body says, no, this is too comfortable. I want to stay. Well, the head isn't going unless the body goes. And so we, as the church, are the body. And so when we go in the name of Jesus, we are going in his name. And so we are representing Jesus on this earth today. We are his uh, children, and we are to demonstrate his love, demonstrate his power, demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, so we are, his, we are the vessels to demonstrate God's love on the earth. And so if we don't go, they will not hear. And if they do not hear, they cannot believe. Mm -hmm. And if they don't believe, they're not going to call. And there's a promise in the Bible that says, whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so in order to call on Jesus, you have to uh, believe, mm -hmm. you know. And in order to believe, you got to hear. And if you don't hear, you got you to have a preacher. And if the preacher doesn't go, you know, so there's a progression. We, we do our part. And the Holy Spirit does his part with the sinner. He convicts, he shows, he reveals, and it's God who saves. And so we have a, the church today has a tremendous uh, responsibility uh, to carry and to, and to spread the gospel for all nations to be saved. Yeah, so now a lot of what you were saying, it seems like it's instruction from Romans chapter 10, where the exactly. Apostle Paul says, well, maybe first of all, how oh, blessed are the feet. Is yes. that, would you say, that, exactly. that's got to be the first that's, that's thing? That's exactly what I was, I was quoting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That you need to have, how blessed are the feet of him who brings good news. So that's kind of getting the body out of bed or getting going. Exactly. Here. Yeah. And then the next step would be? Would be to, they need to preach. To preach, okay. The preacher goes and he tells. So when you preach, now we don't preach theology. We need to preach Christ, preach Jesus. Jesus okay. is the truth. We got to make sure our gospel is the, the true gospel. It, it's not watered down religion. It's, it's Christ, Jesus. And we got to make the gospel very simple. It's not complicated. It's very simple. So we need to present the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. So mm -hmm. the gospel is powerful to those who believe. And so today you're hearing me. You can say, you know, I, yeah, I acknowledge you with my head, but to believe the gospel, it's powerful. When you believe God's word, it's going to change your life. But if you just kind of question it, there's no power. And that's why some people, God's more real to you than it is for somebody else because you believe the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's the power of God. And so, so for them to hear, for them to have to, to receive, they have to hear and to believe. And when they believe, there's a promise when you call on Jesus, God will answer you and he will save. So God will save you through your calling out to him in faith. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's, a, it's a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. It's a marvelous uh, way. It's foolishness to the world. <laughs> it really is. It's not, a, it's not, you know, okay, you're going to do this. You're gonna, no, it's foolishness to the world, what we're doing.
And so that's where faith is reading the word and, and trusting what God is doing. And, and that's where the Lord opens up you know, the whole mm -hmm. life of being a Christian. Yeah, yeah. But you got to be, you got to do that. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, we, we were talking about uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, but that would flip us into 1 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 1 yeah. about, you know, that the mm -hmm. Greeks thought that this was all foolishness yes. and the Jews thought it was all powerless. But, yeah. but for those who are being saved, as you'd say, it's the wisdom and power of God. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. And in order to, re it, it's really, it's, it's so simple. God made this, this gospel so simple. Um, you know, the first step into receiving Christ and to, and to be born again is that the people need to understand their need for a Savior. You know, if you don't know you need something, you're not going to, why do I need it? You know? Mm -hmm. you know, if someone's out there swimming and you throw them a life jacket, and they're like, I don't need this. I'm out here swimming. I'm having a good time. Mm -hmm. They don't think they need it. Well, we all need a Savior. You need a Savior. I need a Savior. Every nation needs a Savior. Mm -hmm. And there's only one Savior. Mm -hmm. There's only one Savior, and His name is Jesus. Yeah, amen to that. <laughs> and He's uh, Lord of all the nations. He is. The Savior for that Jesus. When given Jesus appeared to those, those shepherds, He says, you know, Bless, you know, I have good news for all nations, you know, mm -hmm. unto you born is this day a Savior. Mm -hmm. And so a Savior has been born, and He's the Savior of the world. And He can save all, He came to seek and to save that which is lost. And we were lost, and He came to us in our sin. We were dead in sin, and we were drowning. But He came into our world and gave us a new, mm -hmm. gave us hope. Um, and so the gospel, when people um, know that, the, you know, for example, here's a story. I, I parked a car in a non, no parking zone. Okay. When, I, when I parked my car in that non, non parking zone, I came back and it wasn't there. And I looked around and I saw the sign that says no parking. Why? I had a violation. I broke the law. And there's consequences to that. And it was, there's penalty. I had to pay the penalty. Mm -hmm. And so I come to find out a friend offered to pay for it. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't, I, I don't, want, I don't want to receive that. He said, oh, no, really, I want to pay that for you. No, I, I deserve it. I broke it. I need to pay for it. No, really, I want to bless you. Well, I received it. I was very happy. I broke it, but he paid for it. And so today we need to understand that God has a law. And we all have broken God's laws, whether it's a total lie you, 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 you bore his name in false witness. We all broke God's commandments. So when you break the commandments of God's laws, there is a consequence. There is a penalty that needs to be paid. And it's a song. You know, when I ask somebody, when they acknowledge they have sin, I said, do you know the consequences to your sin? And they're like, no, I don't know the consequences. And I gave them that illustration. When I break the law of the land, there's consequences. Well, when you break the laws of God, there's a, so, there's a consequence, and that's a sobering thought. Mm -hmm. And the consequences to your sin is eternal separation and death, and, and you cannot pay it. It's impossible for you to pay that sin and to get rid of that sin. You can't live good enough. You can't give enough. You are lost, separated, and dying, and you're, and you're without hope. But this is where the good news comes in. But God in his great love, demonstrated him and showed us salvation. So, this, so, that, so now that they understood they sinned, now they know they need a savior. Jesus came and he paid that price by his blood. He was the only one that could pay that price so that we can have eternal life. So just like my friend making that payment, he paid it for me. I deserved it, but he paid it. Now, if I didn't accept it, who would be paying it? I would be paying it. And so if we don't accept what Jesus did, if you don't accept what Jesus did for you, you're going to have to pay for your sins. And just what is that payment? Death, separation. That's, mm -hmm. That's bad, and you can't pay it. It's impossible. It's a, it, people try to live good, do good, to, get, to make that payment. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. There's no man that can make that payment, and there's only one, and that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so he paid it. And so now we must accept that free 
gift, that payment. And that's the good news. Mm -hmm. That's the glorious gospel. And so when you, A, admit you sin, and you know that you need a Savior, B, you believe that Jesus paid the price, and He rose again from the grave, and He's alive, mm -hmm. and then C, you confess, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. So now you're part of some a missionary network, aren't you? Or meaning that like if a church wanted you to come to their church, and of course you've been based in France, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so they, they get a hold of you or do you go to the church and no, say I'm willing con to? No, con just contact our, go to our website and, and... And that'll all be up on the screen yeah, here. And uh, send me an email is probably the best mm -hmm. way. And if you want me to come, just send me an email and uh, we'll work out plans. What, what, what I share what I can give, and you tell me what you, get, what you want, and we can come to agreement, work together. Because uh, I notice when people receive you as an evangelist, as, as, a, as a, a agreed purpose, there's great results. Mm -hmm. But if I try to come into someone's church and try to do something, it, it it's, it's been, doesn't work that way. It's always best if you get invited. Yeah. Because and I'm then the church is working with you to mm -hmm. invite people to come in and to hear this message of salvation. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then they send me back out. Right. <laughs> go, go to the next city. <laughs> yeah. Now, and that's a lot of how Paul would work. And yeah. sometimes he'd be there for more than a day or a few weeks. Sometimes he'd be there for a couple of years. But I, yeah. I think about what you are, what you're doing as an evangelist, and that's really quite admirable uh, as a Christian, uh, you know, people who are reaching and saving the lost. I mean, as you read at the end of Matthew chapter 9, where Jesus is saying that the harvest is ready, but I need some workers to get out there. Yes, and exactly, Pastor. So you, now, does the church kind of give you a free will offering or something to help? I'm trying to think about, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so that you know, how you're funded. Part, I mean, partners. Uh, oh. So Jesus had partners. The people he, he blessed, the people who he blessed, they followed Jesus. They were so thankful and they gave their own supply. And so when people are touched and ministered to, churches grow and people get helped, people want to stay in contact. Mm -hmm. You know, you help them with spiritual things and they sow into you natural things. And so, you know, it's a scripture. Yeah. And so... That's a, it's a partnership like that, that we work together, co-laboring together. Well, I'm very impressed with your ministry, oh, meaning that... <laughs> to God be the glory. I'm, yeah, to God be the glory, God is working in and through you. But like you say, that we do need evangelists and we need missionaries. And you're, in a sense, you're kind of a, a missionary and an evangelist. Yes, yes. But I, you know, if you want to support uh, Tony and his ministry, that... Here again, we've got the information up on the screen. And, and here again, I, I've come to know Tony. He's a very spirit-filled man. Uh, the Lord has placed a very strong Christian ministry on his heart to be reaching yes. and to saving the lost. And so, okay, we talk about you going into the churches mm -hmm. and uh, preaching and also instructing so that others can go out into the harvest. Yeah. But then you also do... Just ministry, what, what would you say, like street evangelism? I've done, or? I've done open air where mm -hmm. I'd stand up and we have drama teams. We have uh, dancers come and music. and So there's the, the, the method is not sacred, but the message is. And so you can use different ways, puppets, drama, music, crusade, you know, different ways. But, uh, but the important thing is that they need to hear. We don't want to have an entertainment. You know, we don't want churches to be an interning and we don't want a crusade to be an interning. They need to hear the full gospel. They need to hear the preaching of the gospel. So if you give me 10, 15 minutes to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. you know, the simple salvation that people can be saved. And so it's very important for us to get the word out and be creative with it. It can be on the Internet. It can be on books. It can be on the television, um, you know, different ways. Mm -hmm. And. You know, it's not just the evangelist job. You know, we all should do, the Bible says in Timothy, to do the work of an evangelist. In other words, it's like singing. We all can sing, but not everybody's gifted to sing. Mm -hmm. and so we all can do the work of an evangelist and go out and, and sh you know, when you taste something good, you want to share it with somebody. <laughs> you know, right. I, I went to a restaurant, man, that was good food, so you share it. 
So when, you, when God touches your life and you know the plan of redemption, it's too good to keep to yourself. It's not, it's not a work. It's not like I go into a church and try to, now this is how we do it mechanically. No, people need to experience the love of God, to know the love of God mm -hmm. and the power of God. Mm -hmm. So when you know the love of God and experience that love, you're going to go out and preach the gospel. So it becomes more natural. It has to be. It has to be a yes. more natural thing because a lot yeah. of people are probably saying, yeah, Tony, I got this passion. I want to reach people for Christ. You know, but is there some mechanical way of doing no, this or is it just... Just seek God. Get, pray this. Lord, let me know the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of your love. Because the more love that you love, the more love you can love others. It's really experiencing God's love. And if your desire is great, your experience with God is going to be great. If you're hunger for Him, He will fill you. And so it's not about mechanical things. It's about experiencing God, His love, and sharing it to the world. And it is oftentimes just really praying that the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. leading to open up a lot of those doors. Yes. I mean, if you, and just to go up and talk to some stranger on the street yeah. may not necessarily... Love has no fear. No fear. I never, you, know, you never fail when you go share Christ. If they reject you, you never failed because you did it in love. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs love. Everybody, you know, mm -hmm. love never fails. Mm -hmm. Never fails. And so if you experience God's love, that is, that's the beginning of evangelism. That is right there. When you experience and know the love of God, that's where, when you're touched, you know what He did for you, it's a natural thing to go well, out. That's the most powerful yeah. gift of God, and the fruit is, is love. Yeah. Love God, love your neighbor. We think of 1 Corinthians chapter mm -hmm. 13. Yes. Well, we're having a little bit of a Bible study of 1 Corinthians today, <laughs> but you know the love chapter and, yes. and what love means. By the way, well, Tony, God bless you. And your ministry and your work as an evangelist, as a preacher. Thank you. And thank you. And here again, I. It's just good to you know touch base with you. Thank you. And and thank you for sharing your person, your faith, and what you're doing as far as how God is working in and through mm -hmm. your ministry. And so I also want to thank all of you for joining us this day as well.